Hey, great to have you with us on the follow through. I'm Pastor Fred. We're here listening to God. We're also living for Him. We're in the book of Revelation. Today, we find ourselves, uh, we're really moving along here. We're in chapter 11. Uh, and between today and tomorrow, we'll kind of cover this uh, section. And uh, again, it is uh, just an amazing, amazing thing because John goes from being the one who sees all this stuff to actually he's going to get into the action today. And, and God wants us as well to kind of jump in. Uh, and so here, here it is in, in, in verse 1 of chapter 11. It says that he was given a measuring rod like a staff. And, and he was told, right? So it's like this cane, it's to measure things. And he says, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there. But don't measure the court outside the temple, leave that out. For it is given over to the nations and they will trample the holy city for 42 months. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses and they will prophesy for, 100, for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. All right, so a lot in there. And in fact, this whole section, there is a lot. Right, we got these two witnesses. Who are they? Are they Elijah and Moses? Are they uh, Peter and, and, and John? Are they one of the apostles? We, do, we don't really know. It doesn't really spell it out. I think it's left open in, like, like, like t intentionally uh, so, so that you can say, okay, this is somebody from history uh, and even now who is faithful and who is bringing the Word of God to the world. And, and, and they're God's witnesses. And so why are there two? Well, back in, in the ancient world, uh, if you look, in, especially in the Old Testament, you'll see that, that testimony in a court of law had to have two witnesses. You, you couldn't just be you going and know I saw that. You had to have somebody who actually saw the same thing. Uh, and if there were two, right, that's why Jesus says, where two or more are gathered, there I am in their midst. So he's saying like, um, that, that it's just really important. And, and so he's got that um, th those two witnesses and, and it really stands to simplify this for us. It's, it's, it's the church and mission, right? It's the people of God. It's, it's, it's us preaching, teaching, telling the, the, the world about Jesus and realizing that it's going to be difficult realizing as you have here that, that they wind up being killed, right? That they wound up having bad things happen to them. It says in verse 7, when they had finished their testimony, the beast that rises from the bottomless pit will make war on them, conquer them, and kill them. Their dead bodies are going to lie in the street uh, of the great city, symbolically called um, Sodom and Egypt, where their Lord was crucified. Three and a half days, they will gaze at the dead bodies, refuse to have them placed in the tomb. They're going to rejoice over them because, again, for, for those who don't believe and, and really, who, who really skew over to the side of like evil, uh, for those of us who tell about Jesus are just kind of a pain, right? We're, we're like, man, we're something, we're something they want to be silenced because we're, we're, we're talking about Christ. We're talking about His righteousness, not ours. We're not talking about our goodness or, or, or wanting to toot our own horn or, or, or make much of us, but make much of, of Him. And, and for someone that wants to do those very things, like glorify themselves and, and revel in sin and death and, 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 and take with everything they can and abuse, um, the, the truth is, is not welcome. That's the message for us today. The truth is not welcome, but we're called to be witnesses, to keep being witnesses together, to be witnesses and to realize that even if they were to kill us for our faith, again, when you look at the entirety of the book of Revelation, you see that there's victory over death and the grave. There's something greater. There's something bigger. If you read the seven letters to the churches, read that again. The crown of life. For, for, if, if we're just faithful, look at God's given us all these things. He's saying, don't cash them in for something worthless. Why would you give something eternal and that's beyond price for something that is two bit and, and is flimsy and that is so incredibly temporary and even worse than that, it's probably poison and toxic to you. Embrace life, the life He gives. And let's help each other to never ever let it go. And so let's stand together as His witnesses today. We'll talk to you next time for another follow-through.